HBCU Digest Radio, Digest After Dark, unfiltered and uncensored talk from young alumni of historically black colleges and universities. Uh, happy to be back in one of our final episodes of the year. Uh, this will be certainly the last one of the academic year now that commencement season is upon us. Um, and a couple more surrounding the HBC Awards come in August 2nd uh, at the Reginald F. Lewis Museum in downtown Baltimore, Maryland. So look for information and tickets yeah. and all that good stuff coming soon. August 2nd, downtown uh, Baltimore, Reginald F. Lewis Museum of African American History and Culture. I'm looking forward to seeing you all there uh, with us tonight. Um, uh, Winston, uh, the, the uh, Mr. Michigan, um, my Detroit, sending him to school, sent him to school, Winston, um, <laughs> KD, uh, my dear brother, and then Ors the Morganite, and then Tiff about to get thrown off the show. So I'm not getting thrown <laughs> off. The show. Um, so uh, because this is a, a recap of the academic year and all the positive and all the negative that has happened throughout the year, so we're going to go down the line and talk about. Some of the things that really stood out to us. Um, this is a departure from what Tiffany recommended, which was everybody rant for 20 minutes What uh, about what makes them mad. Wow. That was vetoed. Um, wow. So, you know <laughs> I don't recall a vote, but I'm, I'm, I understand. <laughs> I don't mean. No, I texted her. I texted and said, if y'all do that, I'm, I'm not, I'm not dialing in, but I'll like it on Facebook. Uh, also say, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and we're going to try to do this. We're going to try to do this without some of the obvious ones, like Robert Smith paying off everybody's loans at Morehouse and Beyonce at Coachella. Those are very easy. Um, but we're going to try to get into some things that we we thought were very helpful to the culture um, and very damaging to the culture over the this, the 18, 19 uh, academic year. Um I will. I would like to go. You want to go first? Okay. Um, okay. You better not say something lame. Yikes. Anyways, so what I would like to say, um, or what I think is the best thing that's happened um, in this academic year, is the amount of collective giving, um, particularly from AKA. Ah, um, good one. And that whole, yeah, I know. And that whole target, <laughs> and that whole target one campaign, mm -hmm. um, that that was amazing to watch. Um, also, I guess honorable mention to um, Omega Sci Fi. They just recently gave what hundred something k um, to HBCUs. But I say that to say as one of the the number one things that I think about. You know, for everybody who is looking at um, what Robert Smith uh, did or in, in, in particular saying that, you know, well, I just wish schools would appreciate the smaller gifts. Like, Jerry, you talk a lot of junk about me being altruistic and how that's mm, a problem. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you have it within yourself to appreciate what you can do, then you should be given anyways. Because at the end of the day, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So if you don't know, if nobody else outside of yourself is going to appreciate what it is that you do and what you can do, that's something that I think we need to say to ourselves as we're giving to our schools or giving to institutions like TMCF or UNCF to make the dream work. So that's all I got. I think that's fantastic because it really speaks to not just national organizations like AK and, and uh, Omega, but that those numbers are reflective of a bunch of individuals giving and in they way. give at least aka does they give recognition to people who are meeting the uh the the target one thing or helping the chapters at least meet the target one specification so outside of the giving part the monetary giving if you're helping them to facilitate college fairs or workshops around hbcus in the community then you get recognition that way too so it is actually more than just money there's substantive work going on but definitely katie you said you did not have a topic you do uh your own chapter uh had a really strong showing uh this i was about to say with well thank you i did have one <laughs> as we get on my nerves this is my turn though it's your turn 
<laughs> um, as a computer science major from Coppin State University, and I'm continuing my education at a non HBCU that we don't have the name. Boo. Um, <laughs> you know, it's business, it's business. Right. But I am encouraged by the continued um, investment in STEM programs mm -hmm. um, throughout the nation. I think it's important that you know you give everybody an opportunity to join the to join the field, especially in technology. Um, and I and it's and it's comforting to a degree seeing you know some of the big names, the top five, and some smaller individuals, you know, going to HBCUs directly and saying, "Hey, give us your students, and we'll teach them and cultivate them, and you know, get them up to speed on how the field actually works." That was big. That that Google West program. Um, yes. Uh, the, or what was it? Howard West program. I'm sorry. At, mm -hmm. at Google. At Google, yeah, um, that's and, the one of the biggest ones. And you had the um, the program at Boeing. Uh, they gave I think uh, six million dollars to a couple of HBCUs specifically. Yeah, to and it, I mean, it's, and it's been some very large dollar investments. It wasn't like a measly fifty thousand dollar scholarship. Like it's seven figure investments up and down, up and down the country. When it's so, yeah. the school, so you 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 come in this into this with an unfair advantage because your program by its nature makes a lot of hbcu news so uh, is this going to be <laughs> midnight winston or is it going to be larger than larger than midnight golf i'm gonna give you both okay um but all of it's gonna be centered around the crib all of it's detroit related <laughs> so <laughs> we'll start off with with big sean and tmcf okay. doing the uh the pitch competition they did here in the city um flying uh i think it was like eight or nine different schools that they sent here to detroit to do a pitch competition in front of um ally financial ceos TNCF CEOs, Big Sean and his organization, and Detroit versus everybody um, as well. Mm -hmm. And so um, we had one of our students who actually was able to participate in it as well in the competition um, with Alabama A and M. She didn't win um, the pitch competition, however, she was. She met the CEO of Ally, and she got an internship as a result of introducing herself and wow. talking up and doing the things that you're supposed to do when you get in the room, when you get a chance to get in the room. So. Um, she'll be in, in Charlotte this summer interning with Ally Financial as a result of that opportunity and her seizing it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm super excited to have them here in Detroit and have HBCUs highlighted in the city um, and represented in that way. And then, of course, have one of our own um, involved in it was a super proud moment uh, for us and for me, too, personally. And then the other one was a gentleman who unfortunately was not in Midnight Golf, but he made national news, uh, Michael Love, mm -hmm. who selected Harris Stowe State. Um, he's from Detroit. Went to a high school, Detroit Cornerstone High School here in Detroit, and uh, he chose Harris Stowe over a bunch of other schools, including Arizona State, uh, University of Kansas. He had 42 acceptances um, and chose Harris Stowe State uh, University. So it was a lot of positive pub for HBCUs in Detroit um, on a national level um, from him. So that was those were two huge things for me, uh, selfishly centered around the crib and, right, and centered HBCU, around Detroit. So. Detroit bias, absolutely. The, no, absolutely. Uh, no, no, definitely right. Detroit bias. Absolutely, hundred <laughs> percent. Or you had you had one in sports, I believe. Yeah, I would just say obviously we know our biggest uh, form of PR is always athletics. Um, so we had a really good year. I mean, you have Darius Leonard, who was you know defensive rookie of the year. You had Tariq Cohen go first team All Pro and make a Pro Bowl. You had Kayla White, who broke a bunch of records indoor and outdoor mm -hmm. in the one hundred, two hundred, and sixty. And then you had Titus Howard going the first round. <laughs> the nfl draft and i think it just gave a lot of good publicity to the schools um especially to the two major conferences the MEAC and the SWAC, um because obviously it's not we've, we've gone years without having the first round draft pick we've gone years without having you know people really who we can tie directly to hbcus in a, in a closer way in a long time the last really like strong hbcu player you know robert mathis and and michael strahan those are like our last two really really all pro um, Pro Bowl style football players, really none in basketball. And we have Kyle Quinn continuing to do well. And mm -hmm. they've been putting off for the schools. I think it's just really good publicity because now we're getting more eyes on it. We're showing that we have, we do have pathways to success, not just within uh, more nine to five type careers, but also in athletics. Um, so, really, really, really big things, I think, for, uh, for the two major conferences, but for HBCUs in general. Um, because it puts more eyes on our schools. And, I mean, when you got Mel Kuyper Jr. talking about Alabama State and SWAT competition for two hours on ESPN before the draft. Right. You know, it, it, nothing nothing bad can come out of that for any of our schools. You know what? I'm glad that you said that because it just made me realize this actually was a huge year for HBC Sports um, because you had 
along with the, what we typically do in you know March Madness and postseason with Celebration Bowl, all those things you just mentioned. But this was also a year where the professional leagues were super engaged with HBCUs. They had the um, uh, obviously Chris Paul uh, kind of pioneering this thing where he was wearing a different HBCU shirt. Um, mm-hmm. Jimmy Jimmy Butler put on for Howard, super heavy. Right. Um, uh, my man too from uh, Boston too. The uh, the young cat T- Tatum had on the NCCU. Um, gear too. Tatum. Because um, Tatum, because Tatum is cool with Lavelle Moton from playing on Chris Paul, from being cool with Harry Giles, because Harry Giles okay. is cool with Lavelle. They all interconnected right. through uh, that North Carolina AAU circuit. Yep, yep. Um, and and it was also a big year of of um partnership with the NFL, uh, NASCAR continuing uh its thing with the, the training people to to serve in the in the pit crews. Uh, you had the the management program where the NFL was training people from HBCUs to get involved in uh, sports management careers. Uh, you had the NBA, obviously, uh, particularly through the Players Association uh, that sponsored and, and put on for its second year, the NBA uh, exclusive. I think it was SWAC and SIAC combine um, where people mm-hmm. were, were trying out for NBA teams and auditioning for GMs and coaches. Um, so it was a it was a really big year. Um for sports, and that's not even talking about like what you know players like Kalen Newton, um, who always you like to call a turnover, um, uh, the turnover machine. Uh, I mean, just 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 check the stats. Man, <laughs> had just as many picks as touchdowns. <laughs> but there were there were the fumbles. There were some big names that we had coming out of the coming out of the the leagues. Um, some really good games that came on this year. So it was it was actually one of the bigger years for HBCU sports. And then you had the sister, obviously, from Virginia Union who scored 60 um, in the CIAA tournament. So, I mean, we had some stuff this year. I, I'm glad you said that because I, I had forgotten about all that stuff. And don't, and don't forget don't forget the young lady from Grandma who had the quadruple double. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. Uh, the, 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 I forgot all about that. The qua- yeah. Did she have two of them? Oh, Chicago, yeah, she had two. She yeah, kind of had two. two. Of them. <laughs> so she made some, it was a, it was a big year for it was a big year for sports. Um, um, I would kind of take mine from stuff that people don't think about, only because I, I got to do it because I make my living doing it. Um, this was the first year in a long time, if even ever, uh, that some HBCUs in some states, notably West Virginia and Kentucky. Uh, had matching funding from their states to go along with their agricultural federal appropriations. This is a big deal. Um, recently, you might have seen the article um, that we posted about uh, legislators in, in North Carolina talking about we don't want to give matching funding to A&T because that might start a race war. Um, and long story short, when the federal government gives you agricultural money, the law is that the states are supposed to match it. If they don't match it, you have to send it back to the federal government. Um, the only way you get to keep some of your money is if you file for a waiver or an exemption saying that the state won't give us our money. Please let us have it. So this was the first year uh, West Virginia, and Kentucky specifically said for every dollar you get, we're going to, we're going to match it. And that had not happened before if ever. Uh, and in some of those cases, if it had happened, it'd been a long time. That's a, that's a huge deal because ag funding and ag programming um, is really big uh, for HBCUs, particularly the 1890 HBCUs, but in those areas where we're training black farmers uh, to expand their businesses, uh, to, to get them caught up on supply chain, to get them caught up on innovations in farming and crop preservation, uh, to get them knowledgeable about the future of hemp and hemp farming in the country. These are multi-million and billion dollar industries that black people in black colleges are going to have uh, some entree into. Um, and that actually goes in, in tandem with the, you know, the thing about Southern University having a marijuana research facility um, and being able to beat multi-million dollar contracts. So that was a big deal. We never had the weed episode. <laughs> well, consider this the weed episode then. No, um, I have a whole thing planned for that. No, no. no. <laughs> More rants or you're going to encourage people to smoke and be high. Um, no, don't get fired. <laughs> don't get fired. <laughs> HBCU alum, I believe his name is Parvis, and he. <laughs> I went to. I she went might to, be high went, right I, now. I, I went to middle school with, with Hope Wiseman, who's the. Uh, she's a Spelman alum. She's the one that opened up the only 
medical marijuana in dc um, right yeah and it's, it's in uh, it's in uh, temple hill i believe yeah yeah we need to have them both i'll get that uh together well apparently we need to have somebody named purvis on the show <laughs> um business you know what don't even worry about it because i'm going to tell you what it is because i produce this podcast and we'll go from there okay oh my uh, the same person who's about to be thrown off the show and say we did i'm not and who said we need a weed episode <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. um the other the other big thing was um the the increased uh, numbers um, on federal data from HBCU. So this was the first year, um, and I got to say this with a caveat: federal data comes out two years behind you. So if this is be- or because this is 2019, the federal data release on stuff like enrollment and revenue and all those kind of things is just being released this year for 2017. And this was the first year that we had in at least five years where HBCU enrollment was up, not down. Or we didn't lose a bunch of students. This is important for two reasons. One, well, obviously we need more students in schools. But two, enrollment in total in colleges and universities across the country is going down. Almost on a yearly basis, college enrollment is down almost a million students every year. So for this sector of 100 some schools, as maligned as we are in the media, as terrible a pile of stereotypes as we face for students to be saying, I want to go to an HBCU in greater numbers. I think we were up like 5,000 students total this year or in 17. That was, that was important. And the other thing that went up with student enrollment was giving uh, private giving and contracts to HBCUs was also up for the third consecutive year. So what you're seeing is people are interested in going to HBCUs. They're interested in giving to HBCUs and this is on the heels of a lot more dialogue and coverage about HBCUs. Now, not, not all of it has been good. Um, some of it has been out of context. A lot of it has actually been out of context. Uh, still following that line about, you know, our HBCUs relevant. Um, still with a focus on crime uh, and bad deeds being done on campus. But it also seems that we're getting a lot more coverage, of, as, as Orr's mentioned, about our sports. Uh, As Winston mentioned about uh, students from high school who are choosing HBCUs, particularly high achieving students, as Katie mentioned, the the role that HBCUs play in developing talent in our most important uh, science and tech fields Uh, and just all around. This was just a really, really good year for HBCUs, if you can believe it. Um, I think sometimes we get so jaded and we're so used to hearing bad stuff about HBCUs. That you can you can miss the fact this was a this was an amazing year. Would anybody disagree with it? No, I think I mean even something that's still kind of we thought was amazing. It's still you know the whole benefit situation. I mean, but the defeat was still honorable and amazing. And even just leading with that, if that was a low point, I mean, based on we don't know the outcome of that at this stage, but still that if that's the low ball, then absolutely it was a pretty amazing year. Like you said, even athletically, academically, across the board, and that's something we're going to get into. Some of the lowlights from the year. Um, we're going to can't see, wait. We're going to see if Mark Scott can't wait. Mark Scott can't wait. If James Ammons, oh, no. if James Ammons resurfaces in the next se- in the next segment. But we'll be right back. Not just at the dark. <laughs> Dodgers at the Dark, and we're back uh, doing a year in, or at least an academic year in recap of the best and worst of uh, HBCU community over the 1819 academic year. We just wrapped up our segment on the best, and now we're going to get into some of the lowlights. So, um, Midnight Winston, you, uh, you're you getting ready to stab me through my heart. Um, oh, no, don't tell. If you, uh, you told me not to do it. No, go ahead. Just say, man, I believe in free speech. <laughs> I just want to you know, say it's going to stab me in the heart. Wow, I you know we have we have a, so dramatic. <laughs> we have a few students you know that are that that attend and recently graduates of Hampton University, and you know they've expressed their displeasure with you know recent developments on campus and statues and things that were erected and recognition of people that they don't believe have the best interest and or uh, the nature of which their university was established at heart. Um, and you know they kind of expressed that uh, that displeasure, um, and also with 
you know, the, their, their president at times are not agreeing with, I guess, the directions or choices that are made, um, you know, on campus. And so, you know, for me, that was, you know, just dealing with that. And I'm, a lot of them were calling and texting me and like, can you believe this mess? And with this cultural climate and, and erecting it now and doing these things, you know. So, you know, that was kind of like, for a lot of them, a, a low mark. Um, and a few of them are, are graduate, you know, just recently graduated the other day um, from there and still were kind of like, this is a mess my last year and this, this kind of stuff is going on, so. I, I get it, man, because of what the Bush family represents and particularly to black folks. Um, yeah. it, it was interesting to me because that whole George Bush statue thing coincided with the Silent Sam thing down at UNC. And, mm. I, and I racked my brain for a minute trying to draw parallels between black folks hating a George Bush statue going up and black folks wanting the Silent Sam statue to come down. Um, and I just couldn't I couldn't make the fit um, because Silent Sam was a, a clearly antagonistic figure to us, to black people. Right. And George Bush is an antagonist, but he's also somebody who gave some money to, to HBCUs. Now, I think wh what we're going to find is that, you know, in the age of Trump, history unexpectedly has been very kind to the Bushes, because if you thought they were bad. <laughs> you <laughs> you didn't know the definition of bad till we got to 2016 um yeah. but then um uh, uh, trump has been a productive president for hbcus so it, history always has this, this <clears throat> cruel way of people uh, of of revealing people's complexity like yeah. you, you can screw us on one end and you can help us on another so how do we how do we define you and more specifically, how does an HBCU, which is an academic institution like anywhere else, and they put up statues of people all over the place, how do we <laughs> reconcile some of those key figures in our, you know, in our institutional histories? It's it's a it's a tough are call, man. Are you saying Morgan's going to have a Donald Trump statue one day? Is that what you're trying to say? You know what, man? I don't think Wilson would do that. <laughs> um, I. I that I will credit him that he will not he would he's politically savvy enough not to do that. Mm -hmm. What I would not be surprised is if somebody from his administration appeared on our campus at some point. Interesting. Interesting. I don't think it would be somebody like uh, crazy like Betsy DeVos or somebody like that. Right. Uh, or or um Ben Carson, somebody who's clearly divisive. But I wouldn't be right. surprised if somebody if somebody from the administration you know, somebody weird like the Secretary of Energy or something came mm. to campus, and that's mm. and that and that would be just as um, worthy of dismissal because one, it's a person who was appointed by Trump, and two, is somebody who probably shares Trump's values. Right. You know, I mean, unless it was somebody like a like a general who who resigned or somebody who resigned saying I don't agree with this man on this, maybe then you know, like Rex Tillerson, maybe. Um, right. But I would not be surprised if somebody from the admin came um, mm. or is you would you agree with that as a Morgan man or. No, I, I would agree. And I don't think that students would be as upset. I never forget if you a couple of years ago. They had um, one of the Republican like he's like the Florida Department of like Florida Department of Agricultural head or whatever spoke at commencement. And students weren't like super happy, but they weren't like it wasn't a bunch of uproar. And I feel like Wilson would do the type of stuff. And again, I would say I just don't necessarily disagree with it. Mm -hmm. I think that it actually can be beneficial to find people who are not as, um, how can I put this, divisive people who aren't, you know, flashpoints and have them in. It, it, it builds some bridges, um, especially because, as we all know, it's a very large chance he's going to win re-election. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I think that people who are politically savvy understand this that looking at the numbers right now he's in a good position to get reelected. so because of that it would be in our best interest to not totally close the door just yet um let's we'll wait till november of next year um because again it's a very large chance that that he could get reelected in this current climate so let's go into your low lights of the year so <laughs> do you want me to do two or we just do one you do whatever you want to do brother so, of course, the biggest love of the year was the interim <laughs> president, uh, Kevin James, at Morris Brown College. Wait a minute. Um, wait a minute. <laughs> take her, take her, take her topic, Robert. Well, look, wait a 
I'll let Corey, Tiffany finish. I'll, you let you, off again. I'll let you I'll let you 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 can't kick finish. him out two episodes in a row. I'll let Who you finish. I'll, I'll, I'll let you I'll let you finish. She absolutely I'll can. <laughs> I'll let you finish. Y'all I'll let Do you finish. Do not test her. And get your so, second one out. Why are you so close to the mic, Katie? Goodness gracious. She sounds like a radio. He got a, he got a high quality mic. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, I'll say this. I feel like mm-hmm. number two then behind him, obviously we talked about it last week, is uh former North Carolina Central Chancellor, former FAMU president, current vice chancellor of the Southern University system, James Ammon. You're just gonna drag him through three campuses. I mean he dragged us. <laughs> So, um, so I mean, after being embroiled in controversy at two other campuses, um, he's in controversy again. Uh, we don't have, we haven't had any updates in the last week or so, based on the most recent ruling that uh, Southern did violate some laws and the way they fired and handled information coming out of the uh, grade scandal. Um, so, I mean, another low life. I mean, I don't understand how um, he continues to be covered in controversy. I don't understand why there isn't someone in compliance who's been able to keep him in check in any of the schools either. Um, and if, uh, happening at Southern just kind of adds more to the fire because they had a lot of controversial things as well, just like Sam U does in, in many cases, unfortunately. So definitely James Ammons. Um, hopefully, you know, Southern continues to prevail. Um, but it doesn't look good right now based on what you know, the people are saying. Um, but, yeah, I just hope that he continues to uh, get this heat and get this smoke and no one's going to bring it. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany, since you rudely cut people off, go ahead and talk about Morris Brown. I did not rudely cut him off. He tried to steal my thunder. <laughs> now, I would like to remind us all that last year, no, at the at, right before the beginning of this academic year, I went to a local Morris Brown College Alumni Association meeting back when I was still living in Detroit. Partly because I was confused and a little shook that (laughs) there was a meeting happening. So I went to go see what could be seen. And at that meeting, I learned that they were still out actively recruiting students to attend Morris Brown College and that they had a quote, presidential scholar in her freshman year at Morris Brown College. And so I say that to say the low light is that Morris Brown College is still open, even though they've been unaccredited for 17, 18 years at this point. They're still actively recruiting, clearly. And it just it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. And I've said repeatedly that Morris Brown needs to um not exist as a a school anymore maybe be changed into something else um but definitely that young lady should be at the end of her freshman year i do need to catch up with her to see if she's about to change her mind but the thing about her situation is she had a good gpa i think if i go back in my dms around a 3.0 plus graduating from high school decent uh sat score she could have gone elsewhere could have probably gotten money from from elsewhere um but she's first gen and morris brown was the only place that actively recruited her that made an effort to begin a relationship with her and her parents so they thought that that was a good idea to send her to morris brown now that says a lot about the state of schools in and around detroit as to why guidance counselors would even allow Morris Brown to come in. That's a whole other thing, but that mm-hmm. that is actually <laughs> very interesting like when when I think about the entirety of her situation and how some things are actually preventable because those credits that she earning, what are they gonna transfer to? Nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you better have some smoke for your man ducking interviews. Like <laughs> Yeah, you, you you better have some smoke for this man talking about going online, going on the radio. We've been unaccredited oh, for a few you're years. Right. You're right, because on the thread, homegirl really tried to get with me, but that's when I was still had had digest as a client, so I couldn't you know pop off. But that's really crazy. You said what you said as the president. <laughs> you you're not gonna 
You're not going to hide from no interviews. Watch me work. It's been how many months? Bruh, even the, bruh, this not man, even a response this, yeah. this man said a few years they've been unaccredited. It's been 17, <laughs> bro. <laughs> These fools my already. Twin brothers, my twin brothers are 18. They just turned 18 two months ago. Young. Come on. They've been, they been unaccredited since 02. <laughs> the hottest song in America was hot in her. Oh <laughs> man. Shout out to Taylor. Shout St. out Lewis. to Taylor and singles. He go <laughs> he gonna vote Nelly in here. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, do you have one? I guess on a more personal note, um uh uh Coppin State University's president had to step down because she was sick. Yeah. Um so it's not necessarily a knock on Coppin, just unfortunate that we didn't have her for very long. I really believed in her direction and her leadership and the way she wanted to, um, you know, push the campus forward. But now we're back in this loop where we got to find the new president. And that's always a hard conversation to have in general. But we're not unique in that either. So I guess it's a little disappointing to see the spat of um, HBCU presidents be dismissed this year. You actually, I was going to say you stole mine or one of mine because I was going to talk about in each of the last three years. Three of Maryland's four HBC presidents have either retired or, or said we're we're leaving. Um, you know, and and that that is not a good look for the prospects of the lawsuit, um, which got extended again, um, which is also a low light. And the only one to stay, you don't like. The, the only one who stayed is working with the state. Um, <laughs> as an agent and a man, Dave Wilson's an agent and a man. I said it. Um, oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> uh, so. I mean, he'll listen to this podcast anyway, so it's fine. Oh, he going to, no, somebody going to drop it on him as soon as they heard <laughs> me say David Wilson is an agent of the man. Um, <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. But, but that, that is, that is ultimately disrupted three presidents of three H state HBCUs leaving in a span of three years. Um, that's new leadership coming in. That's new administration coming in. That's new vision coming in. And then on top of that, you had to mess with the university system of Maryland. The chancellor is going to leave. They had a football player die. Um, you know, they, they had they had ethic issues. So all of those things trickle down to affect the way that the HBCUs operate. That was definitely a low light. And I don't and what was lower is that the alumni and the faculty didn't really make any noise about it. How are you gonna have three yeah, presidents were, in one system silent. leave? You only got four Yeah, schools, they four were definitely colleges. silent. They said That's nothing. True. So that was that was a low light. I think the biggest low light to me was um the situation in Georgia where the black lawmakers put forward that that bill that said they wanted to rename or or reconstitute Fort Valley State, Albany State and Savannah State into the Georgia A&M University system. Um on its face <laughs> I don't think Bruh. that the idea was was bad because I think that there if you do it the right way you may be able to insulate those 3 HBCUs from some from some potential and real harm from the state. But they lied. <laughs> then now we got to get to the low light part. First of all, you wanted to name the proposed system after the, the Joan on the quad, <laughs> <laughs> which, which was, I found reprehensible. If the, it, one, because I found the show reprehensible, but two, you didn't, you couldn't come up with something better than what the, what they did on BET's the quad. Let, let's say you don't run into a copyright infringement issue trying to copy the name of that school right why <laughs> george a and m i mean it's catchy it gets the people going you know wow and on top of that if you're gonna do that the only agricultural school out of those three is fort valley the one that's in the worst condition so what you're basically saying is we're gonna merge all of these into into fort valley to make it a land-grant school because that's what a and m would mean that it's a land it's a land-grant school so I don't even think they thought that far. I don't think that they did their homework. And then to get to Katie's point, then they lied and said, well, this isn't a bill. Y'all almost made me curse. D and that's <laughs> when we found out that everybody that was this old in terms of schoolhouse rock actually didn't memorize or understand anything. I'm just like, like I'm we just can read. It says <laughs> a bill. I wanted to argue that it was not a bill. Why are you going to? Uh, it said <laughs> bill in the title. <laughs> Man. We're, mis we're, we're, we're misunderstanding clearly but that's what made it such a low light because in the age of Trump again people are lying and it's who are you fooling 
This clearly then says it, bill. It's <clears throat> on your legislative bill search. It's still currently on there. It's still <laughs> moving through legislature for next year. That was a bill. So just I mean, be- they forgot about it. So just it because matter. you got caught doesn't mean it wasn't a bill. Just kidding. Just kidding. And then in the in the defense of it, it became clear that they had a plan that th- their intentions were good. They wanted to do something so that they could save those schools because Georgia is moving on them very quickly. They've already merged several white schools close to those black schools that are taking their enrollment every single year. So I don't I don't fault the legislators for doing that. They did not do their homework. And then when they got when it became public notice. They they tried to lie their way out of it, had to retract the lie. And then never advanced any kind of. I guess language that would suggest here is why it's beneficial. All you did was just say, oh, it's not a bill. Yeah, it's a bill, but I took my name off. Well, why were y'all studying that in the first place? Why can't we talk about that? Why can't we talk about a, 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 a thing that people can get behind rather than Georgia and m University? Like the damn quad. That that to me was that was the there are a lot of crazy things that happened here, but that was the worst because that was black folks lying about HBCUs. And they, and they and it became clear that they had no nuanced understanding of what they were doing or what they were supposed to be doing. And that was that was highly disappointing. Highly disappointing. So, I mean, yeah, I've almost cursed twice in this segment. So we're going to get off this. Um, and when we come back, we're going to give our high and low lights from actually Digest After Dark, which should be very interesting. Uh, so, wait, wait, wait. So no, we'll be back, no, Digest no, After Dark. No. Dodgers at the dark and we're back uh, recapping the highlights and lowlights of the academic year within the HBCU community. Um, now we're going to shift slightly to a whole bunch of inside jokes likely um, <laughs> and talk about some of the highlights and lowlights of our HBCU Digest slash Dodgers at the dark community. So a lot of you guys who listen and have shared this um, are part of our group chat. Well, we built a lot of strong alliances and relationships and we talk heavy every day about policy, about pop culture, about uh, lifestyle. And I'm, I'm really grateful to everybody who's a part of that. Um, everybody who's You're a part welcome. of it because they sponsor the digest uh, as a subscriber, everybody who has opted in um, because they really enjoy digest content and the dialogue. Thank you so much. Um, if we had time, I read the whole list of names in the group chat, but uh, I don't know. That no. thing got short today. Yeah, we're not doing. Yeah, Tiff, <laughs> that was actually. I'm, I, let's start there. So, Katie, what did you think about that? Because Tiff purged oh, at man. least a good twenty percent of the group today. So when I asked the question, I wasn't doing it to be mean or spiteful. I just wanted. Of course, to, you, you just know. didn't know. Like, you know, like if y'all gonna be a part of the community, like come on, chime in. Right. I'm trying to learn something. Mm-hmm. Um, Tiffany took that as the golden opportunity to say, you know what? Your silence means that you don't really care for us <laughs> in this circle. For anybody who watches Game of Thrones, it almost looked like the, Yo. the, 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 the second to last episode. Uh, I, I, I'll just leave it at that. Um, mm, I, that, was, that was rough. It, it really, you do got to participate. We depend on each other to, to bring in news, start dialogue and disagreement in some cases so that we can have a better understanding of a lot of topics in the HBCU community. Um, Tiff, you did the purge, so obviously you, you were bored today, feeling cute. Um, um, did you did you set out, did you think that was part of the plan or you just reacted today? We are not about to act like this was my first purge because it was not. No, it was the biggest. Thank you. Was it the biggest? You threw out some alphas that had to be rescinded. <laughs> she threw out a alpha that had to be rescinded. I thought Thank she threw out Katie. Jordan. I thought she threw Jordan out. No, she didn't no. Why would I throw Jordan out? Oh, okay, all right. I know she exactly. Threw, I threw, she threw Matt out. Unacceptable. And I and I said I asked the question for clarification. I said, "Is this an alpha who's not said a word here?" He's working. I don't care. He works for Harvey. Work <laughs> He's working as I was about constant, to say. Constantly working. That's fine. 
As I was about to say, um, at the point that I decided to purge people, I was sitting at my desk ready to leave, but I could not yet leave. That's when I hopped in the chat. KD said what he said. I said, oh, I got 15 minutes to spare. (laughs) Bro, she did that without Gort. I'm just going to throw that out. Because I pay attention. Mm. Well, I can speak to another low light. So several of y'all, Midnight Winston, uh, Winston Center of School and Tiff are still waiting for um, HBCU Advocate sweatshirts that have not yet arrived. No, I actually for the record, I don't have one either. That is also that is a low light um, for sure. Winston got the wrong shirt. Tiff didn't get one at all, and that's just me. Nope. Tro- that's just me trolling her on accident. Bruh, um, I've known him. I, we pledged together. I don't have a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so Winston, would you say that that was your that was your low light of of being in the digest community? Um, that was yeah. I mean, there's there's few and far between. I don't uh, you know low lights in the HG digest community are low for me. The only other thing I would say is just I'm annoyed with the continued conversation of PWI versus HBCU on, on social media. That's mm. just like that's low. I'm just like really tired of of the conversation. So it's interesting that that when you have because here's the way I see it. Most people are, I think, are ambivalent about it. I think that they have their preferences, but they're not willing to say to hell with everybody who doesn't go to an HBCU. But right. then, but, so we're really talking about the, convers- the conversation is shaped by the lunatic fringe, right? Um, yeah. You know, so, but you're somebody who, and a lot of people are like this. They attended PWIs, but they are strong HBCU advocates. So when this yeah. conversation pops off, like, where do you, do you chime in and what do you say? Man, you know, good and well, I am on the side of other other people. I'm like, before you go popping off about what's what's what, what, what is your experience with HBCUs in general? What do you know about them? Mm-hmm. What, please tell me about, and if you say anything about you want to go to school with more diversity, then the conversation is ended at that point because you clearly are not educated on the options and what they are. Yeah. It's I always say, I always say when that diversity word comes up, because I hate it you know, regarding colleges, mm. I say, um, you want intersectionalism. You don't want diversity. Right. Mm. Right. You just want, mm. you want to be in a place where there are pockets of different people, not right. mingled mm. together. You just want to, you want to rack of pockets. No doubt. You know what I mean? You want to go, you want to sit at your table in the calf. You don't want an old calf to yourself. You want your table. You want your dorm. You want mm-hmm. your professors. I mean, and that's yep. no shade if that's what you like. I mean, but yeah. like Armstrong Parker and dear white people. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say my reaction cool. is, is usually like Drake. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like that. I'm, That's cool. Just don't no, come just, for them. Don't come for us. Because people, because people like to paint black people with one broad brush. But I swear to God, there's more than one type black person. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Please. Like, but when even and and that is very true. But at the end of the day, I think all of us want and don't want a few of the same things, no matter where we are and what our interests are. We don't want racism in our lives mm-hmm. and we don't want it around us. Right. And we don't yeah. want to be judged outside of our merit, like what we're able to do and what we have the opportunity to do. So if you think about it in those two realms, which of these places has better served your interest considering that at most PWIs, even if the school can be totally liberal and totally down for black people, you can't control every person on that campus. You can't control every mm-hmm. faculty member. You can't control every student. You can't control every police officer. Mm-hmm. So what, mm-hmm. what, what, what are you aiming for? I have a low light, a low low light to share. Actually, mm-hmm. um, it's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people got away with a lot of things with me, particularly because cute shrimp me. No, ain't no shrimp me. Okay, particularly because Digest was my client, and so. And that's another thing. People don't understand, like, the relationship is different. Like, I don't work for Jared. Jared was my client. That's different. Mm-hmm. But anyways. And so a lot of people got a, got away with a lot of things um, with me. And 
with that being said, having a lot of private conversations slash arguments with Jared about some of these Negroes. Um, and it's at this point, like, yeah, y'all got the last word, but I definitely got the last laugh. Did you? Yeah. How'd you get the last laugh? You know, I'm not going to put them on blast like that. <laughs> but you and I both know <laughs> I got the last laugh. Oh and those who know, know, because Winston knows, Oris knows, the daddy click knows. Shout out to Una, Tay, and Laurel. They know. Um, so that's that's just, you know, my non-specific low light to share. But really is a highlight because... Honestly, I could have cursed a number of these people out, Blocking. and I just I didn't. Blocking people from the show, or is you got you got oh, some not, from the community? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm not blocking nobody. I put in the chat what's what, and when is when it's happening. If you don't opt in, you don't opt in. Or is the Morgan I say I'm lying? <laughs> so no, I have wait, it. Hold, on, hold up. <laughs> No, this rain is over. Or. But wait, <laughs> we <though. need> to, <laughs> but wait. <laughs> right, she come back. But wait, there's more. There is no more. The rain is over. We, I'm just saying. <laughs> or is what was what was yours? So I have I have more of a highlight. Um, you know, I obviously started my digest um, career. I guess you could say by blasting more <laughs> Yeah, by submitting the <laughs> article and. Um, you know, I've continued to write throughout the year, which has been uh, which has been quite fulfilling. So that's been my highlights, being able to, to write about different topics. Uh, most recently, had some good dialogue uh, for a rebuttal I wrote about a Wall Street Journal article. Still have to see if we can get that journalist on. She agreed to. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, having that dialogue, being able to have an effect on the larger scene, and even though we may not see you know a bunch of comments, those type of things, people who matter, who are influencers within the space, have taken take a note to some of the things that, that I've written, which I appreciate. Um, and then I think the only low light would be again, just kind of on that same thing. You know, um, we live in a 140 character type of society now, especially when we talk about our schools and it's unfortunate that only bad news gets a lot of the, um, a lot of the information, a lot of the clicks. And, um, it's sad that, you know, my, uh, shadiest article, I guess you could say, to this day is still the one that's gotten the most um, most traction. And it's unfortunate that it takes calling somebody out or, or pointing out something that, you know, isn't in the best interest of our, our campus is really what gets people excited. And it's unfortunate because we complain about bad news, but then when there's good news, we don't support it. Um, and so that was def that's definitely a low light is just continuing to see how things are. But I think it's a, I think it's continuously funny as people click on articles and they see they have to pay a dollar. Um, to really see who really is about this life in terms of supporting the sector and doing things that are going to be beneficial to the sector um, versus kind of what we've seen in the past. What the the post I did about people <laughs> bitching and moaning about paying a dollar for the digest on the Nipsey Hustle thing. That was that was my personal little, like that was. Um, I'm not even sure how to describe it. Like, I still feel the same way. But looking back at it, it's a low light because it probably could have been done. uh with more conscious um, consciousness about how people would take it, particularly in proximity to the brother's death. Um, so that was one for the community that took a hit because you guys had to stand there and cuss me out in a, in a familial way, but at the same time publicly stay silent um, or even defend me in some per, uh, perspectives, which was not a good look for to put you guys in. So that was one thing. The highlight was, um, having on a daily basis a lot of highly educated highly interested and um engaged brothers and sisters to talk about all of this stuff because one thing about covering this sector it gets really really lonely um when you have to tell certain truths when you have to cover certain things when you get six seven eight nine calls a day people saying we need you to do this we need you to do that um you don't get paid for it. Uh, you don't get a lot of recognition for it. Um, the only time you get attention for your work is when you have to say something that's really uncomfortable or really, uh, really spicy. Um, 
and you're standing there in between, you know, something good happening for a school or something bad, um, that gets really lonely. And that's something I've been doing for 10 years. And so now to have um, a bunch of brothers and sisters who are interested in it, willing to talk about it, talk through it uh, with me and with each other on a daily basis makes my daily work not so lonely. Um, and I'm forever grateful for that uh, because I think it is one added life, <laughs> added years to my life. And two, uh, it reinvigorates uh, my passion to do it because, you know, Tim will tell you and my wife will tell you a whole bunch of people. Tell you, I wanted to quit this thing for years. Uh, y'all make me sick. And now that, that that's my yeah, that actually <laughs> was my screen name at one point. Y'all make me sick. Um, and now it's uh, it's not that. And so my retirement talk is, is limited to probably once a week instead of six days a week. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, so I'm grateful to you guys and thank you guys um, for the continuing support. Um, so that that pretty much um, wraps up our our end of the year recap again. Um, the next two episodes you will hear from us are going to be the preview of the HBCU Awards where the finalists uh-huh. will be revealed. Um, there will be no weed episode. Come on. Um, Come on. <laughs> Give the lady what she wants. Katie mad. <laughs> Katie wants to Katie wants to call in high. Um and, Yo, you know what? And there wait a minute. I'm trying to get a job in DC, fool. <laughs> wait a minute. And then we'll have the uh Can we do that on August third? No. Um, because you're not gonna wow. be coming down from a high recording that um at the, the awards. <laughs> um so can we do a live show pre before the awards? That's what I'm. Yeah. That's what I've been aiming to do. Oh, yeah. I've been aiming to. I was actually aiming to do that. Last year it was just me and Tay. The hotel we didn't have it yet. You and Tay were at my house. Um, and we the, the microphones they didn't have a good set up set up place for us to do it where there wouldn't be a bad echo. But perhaps at the Reginald Lewis Museum there might just be a space for that, like a conference room. So be on the lookout. We might have a, we might have a live episode. actually. I can probably get you a room. Just let me. Just let me know. At Lewis Museum, we can go to at any, at any of the Marriott hotels downtown. Just we'll talk off the line. Now we can talk about that on mm. the Fairfield Marriott. <laughs> no, 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 all of right them. next to the right next to the museum. Yo. So I don't know what that is. You about think... to blow the plug. <laughs> the, look, look, as you know, I started my career downtown. I can get us a a, a, a nice kind of meeting style um, boardroom style room at one of the three. Married either the Renaissance, the Mar- the waterfront, or the uh, Inner Harbor. Woo. I can make I can make a call to the I know the, sen- the senior sales manager is an uh, old friend of mine. I can make a call. Shout out to the Earl Gray School of Business and Management. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, not and shout out to the FAMU SBI. Uh, you know it pays to have brothers in high places, doesn't it? Uh, particularly those nope, from nope. HBCUs. So again. Um, you will hear from us just before the HBC Awards. You will hear from us just after the HBC Awards. And then after those things, we look forward to um, checking in with you on social media uh, at HBCUdigest.com. Make sure you subscribe on Patreon. It's just a dollar a month, folks. Don't be out here bitching and moaning about the dollar a month. Or <laughs> you said it again. Don't be out here. Say it with your chest. Don't. <laughs> I'm not going to say it with my chest again. I did that. I got to drop it last time. <laughs> Um, I ain't gonna lie. That, that dollar do sneak up on you. It's like who the hell? Oh. Who, is, who is charging me a dollar? <laughs> oh, that's Jared dumbass. Um, <laughs> so, so we'll be back again. Thank you so much for listening. Um, thank you for all the support of the HBCU Digest again, and appreciate you for listening to us on HBCUdigest.com and Sirius One Forty Two XM Radio, uh, the pride of Howard University Digital Radio Network. Digest at the dark. Please.